Good morning. We gather on this Tuesday, April 28th, as we begin our prayer in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and with your spirit. spirit. Sisters and brothers, as we continue in the joy of the Easter season, we pause for a moment. The first call to mind our sins, our struggles, our anxieties, as we prepare now to ask for the Lord's pardon. You were sent to heal the contrite of hearts. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. You were seated at the right hand of the Father and intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us all. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. And let us pray. O God, who opened wide the gates of the heavenly kingdom to those reborn in the waters of the Holy Spirit, pour out your servants an increase of grace that you have bestowed, that having been purged for all sin, they may lack nothing, that in your kindness you have promised through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Stephen said to the people, the elders, and the scribes, You stiff-necked people, uncircumcised in heart and ears, you always oppose the Holy Spirit. You are just like your ancestors. Which of the prophets did your ancestors not persecute? They put to death those who foretold the coming of the righteous one, whose betrayers and murderers you have now become. You received the law as transmitted by angels but you did not observe it. When they heard this, they were infuriated, and they ground their teeth at him. But Stephen, filled with the Holy Spirit, looked up intently to heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. And Stephen said, Behold, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they cried out in a loud voice, covered their ears, and rushed upon him together. They threw him out of the city and began to stone him. The witnesses laid down their cloaks at the feet of a young man named Saul. As they were stoning Stephen, he called out, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he fell to his knees and cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. And when he said this, he fell asleep. Now Saul was consenting to his execution. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Into your, Into your hands, hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. my spirit. Be my rock of refuge, a stronghold to give me safety. You are my rock and my fortress. For your name's sake, you will lead and guide me. Into, Into your, your hands, hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Into your hands I commend my spirit. You will redeem me, O Lord, O faithful God. My trust is in the Lord. I will rejoice and be glad of your mercy. Into your, your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your kindness. You hide them in the shelter of your presence from the plotting of men. Into, Into your, your hands, hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. I am the bread of life, says the Lord. Whoever comes to me will never hunger. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. The crowd said to Jesus, What sign can you do that we may see and believe in you? What can you do? Our ancestors ate manna in the desert, and it is written, He gave them bread from heaven to eat. So Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you. It was not Moses who gave the bread from heaven. My Father gives you the true bread from heaven. From the bread of God, 
is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. So they said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never hunger, and whoever believes in me will never thirst. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. As we're <clears throat> given that beautiful imagery in the gospel, whoever comes to me will never hunger and will never thirst. When I looked at the readings last night, and in particular the Acts of the Apostles, and read this account, I felt like I was standing at a high-quality dinner buffet that had so many options from which to choose I couldn't even think where to begin. Because in this little, small piece of scripture, there is so much contained today. As we hear the story of Stephen, the first martyr, and Stephen, like so many martyrs and so many prophets, is giving a message that is hard to hear to as the scripture describes the, the stiff-necked people who, and this is a line that, that really stuck with me last night, who oppose the Holy Spirit. Easy to point fingers at those stiff-necked people who oppose the Holy Spirit, and so we just step back a little bit and just do what we did very briefly at the beginning of our liturgy, call to mind our sins, our sins even from the last couple of days, the last week, much less the last couple of months. How many times have we opposed the will of God? And how many times have we been those stiff-necked people who don't see the Holy Spirit literally right next to us, guiding us and trying to help us through difficult times? Stephen, as he challenges the people, irritates them. And Scripture says to us, they grind their teeth. They're, 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 they don't like what he's saying at all. But we hear about Stephen filled with the Holy Spirit. Stephen, who does not oppose the Holy Spirit, does not turn away from the Holy Spirit, but embraces the Holy Spirit and embraces the Holy Spirit and the risen Lord in the midst of his suffering as he is about to be given the, the ultimate cost of persecution for speaking the faith. And he has this beautiful vision that says to us about the heavens opening and seeing the Son of Man at the right hand of God. But this line is the line that really struck me, not only opposing the Holy Spirit. The people cry out, or Stephen cries out in a loud voice, and the people cover their ears as they rush toward him to stone him. It's a great, great reminder and a great image for us of the whole power of sin, because isn't sin basically the covering of our ears? How many times do, do kids and adults mocking kids on the la 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 la? You know, we, cover, we cover our ears and we make noise and we say, I can't hear you. I can't, we can hear each other, but we're trying to drown out the voice that we don't want to hear. We're trying to drown out whatever it is that we know is right, but is standing in the way of what we want to do. And then we have, as if there wasn't enough there, and there's a, that is like a buffet, like, any number of those things would be enough to just kind of sit with and take in. But then this, this not so much introduction, but as we begin to hear about Saul. Saul who stands at the feet of Stephen, the first martyr, the first to give his life, literally to give his blood for the proclamation of the faith and for irritating those who don't want to hear the message of Jesus. Paul is in attendance. Saul, who will become Paul, the great preacher and the great evangelist, is in attendance. And actually, the people lay their cloaks at Saul's feet as they're stoning St. Stephen. This is such a great early introduction to redemption and the power of God's mercy. One who stands at, at, at the foot of someone who's being killed and does nothing to stop it, does nothing to interject, and yet, through his conversion and through his willingness, later, Saul's willingness to hear the Holy Spirit and to uncover his ears and to allow himself to enter into relationship with the risen Christ. 
will become the greatest evangelist and preacher of all times. Whether it's Peter's denial or Saul's allowing of this death, it's a great reminder of how God can work through the worst of the worst in all of us. If we just stop covering our ears, if we stop refusing to listen to the Holy Spirit, if we like uh, St. Stephen, who gives his life so gloriously today in martyrdom, just allow ourselves to see the beauty of the kingdom and the risen Christ standing at the right hand of God and the Holy Spirit who wants to point us to Jesus, the risen Christ, and to God the Father. If we just open our ears to the will of the Lord and the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. With great confidence in God's abounding love, mercy, and forgiveness, we not only open our ears to hear his voice, but we open our voices to give voice to our prayers, not only for ourselves, but for people in need all around the world today. For the church, as the body of Christ in the world, may God bless her with purity and unity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For our elected leaders, may God grant them fortitude to rise above all that divides them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For those suffering religious or ethnic persecution, may God protect them from all harm and prejudice. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. For those in our community who are preparing for the sacraments, may God give them strength to live out their faith. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. For those who have died, May they find a place in heaven at the eternal banquet of the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For David Michael Verneau, for whom this Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. For the prayers that we hold now in the quiet of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Trust in your love, your mercy, and your forgiveness. We ask that you hear the prayers that we bring to you today, if they be your will. We ask that you grant them in the name of Jesus, the risen Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed be you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed be you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May, May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good all of his holy church. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exalted church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up, up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right, right and, and just. just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to laud you more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him the children of the light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and his rising and in his rising, the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy every land and every people, 
exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim, proclaim your, your death, death, O Lord, Lord and, and profess your, your resurrection until you, you come again. again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. John the Evangelist, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For it is through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. I meant to add a prayer at the Universal Prayer uh, today on this Feast of St. Stephen for Father Stephen Gosnell, who served for some years with us uh, here at St. John's, who we keep in contact with regularly and continues uh, to enjoy retirement, uh, but with a, a good number of health struggles still. Um, at Mercy Bridge. So just remember with great fondness and continued prayers, Father Stephen, and thanksgiving for his years of service here at St. John's and uh, throughout the Archdiocese. As we pray now on the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May the peace of the risen Lord be with you always. And, and with your spirit. spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. 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 Lamb of God, God you, you take, take away, away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. 
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say, say the word, and my soul shall be healed. uniting our hearts and our prayers around the Lord's table until the day where we can be united at his table again, we pray our spiritual communion prayer. My Jesus, I believe, I believe that you are, are present in the most holy sacrament. sacrament. I love I you above love all things, things and, I and I desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there. And I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen. And let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in the flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. I gotta keep things moving along because our seminarian has to get to his online class. Just in case the vocation director or anybody from the seminary is watching, I just wanna just wanna be really clear. He's doing all the work that he's supposed to be doing, and he's gotta get to a Zoom class. So the Lord be with you. And with, with your spirit. spirit. May Almighty God bless you this day, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Have a great day, everyone.